Yeah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. See, you came from a father who does not speak the situation, yeah. but speak at the expectation. Somebody hearing what I'm saying now? I'm about to bring about five, six, seven, about seven or eight foundations inside matrimonial foundation or pillars that makes the foundation. Number one, you don't marry somebody that is not born again. Ezra 9, verse 12. Ezra chapter 9, verse 12. Ezra 9 and verse 12. Now therefore, now therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons. Don't give your daughter to the sons of the strange religion. Don't give your daughter to a, a boy who is having a, a different religion from the believer's religion. If you do that, you have already committed sin against God. You have broken the foundation. Don't give your daughter to any person who does not have the same faith like you have as a child of God. Go ahead. And take, neither take their daughters unto your son. Don't let your son marry any girl that is not genuinely born again. As a parent, if you allow it, you have broken the foundation and you are going to be held accountable by God. You'll be punished for allowing your child to marry somebody whose salvation is not proven. For he said, don't give your son to their daughter. Don't allow your daughter to marry their son. Go ahead. Nor seek their peace or their wealth forever. Don't seek their wealth. Don't try to make accord with them. Friendship, boyfriend, girlfriend. That ye may be strong. That ye may be strong. It means if you violate this foundation, wickedness will take over you. You will be weak. You see, it's not demon. It's not demon. It's the foundation you break that gives room for Satan to attack. When you are praying over an area where your, the issue is fundamental, an issue of breaking foundation, prayer doesn't work except total repentance and calling back what you did, correcting the evil. You wonder why you pray over some issue, it doesn't change. This is fundamental issue. Because you know that it's not good and you did it. He said, henceforth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. Hebrews 12. Either 10 or 12. So anyone that does anything willfully, Whosoever does anything willfully, say, let him wait for judgment. Therefore, there's no other sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice. For if we sin willfully, if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of truth, after you have received the knowledge of truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. The blood of Jesus will not prevail. The blood of Jesus will not work. That blood that cleanses without considering judgment only worked when you have not been born again. Every sin you committed, every mistake you made, that blood prevailed. And no condemnation, no con if you have been doing abortion before you got born again, 21 abortion. The day you become born again, God will not remember anyone you did. Because the man that he's looking at now is not the former man. He's a new person. So this new person did not commit abortion. That's why he said, when you are born again, you are a new creature. The one that committed abortion is the old man. 
the one that is born again is a new person entirely. That's why I'm pitying those who are breaking ancestral cause, family, family demon, ancestral spirit. The ancestral spirit is not for the new man. The born again child of God does not have ancestral background. Until you know this truth, you remain in bondage. Any sin you committed as a non-believer, you are forgiven without judgment. Because the new person he is dealing with now is a new person. Not the one that committed the sin. So from now, when you are born again, you are doing things that are contrary to the kingdom you belong to. He said the blood will not clean anything. You will pay the price, the consequence of your action. Read again. For if we sin willfully, if you sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice. No more sacrifice for, for sin. sin. Go ahead. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and very indignation which shall devour the adversary. Just be waiting for judgment over the area you messed up. It will come. Go ahead now. He that despised Moses' Lord died without mercy. He that despised Moses' Lord died without mercy. Under two or three weaknesses. Under two or three weaknesses. Of how much surer punishment. Of how much surer punishment. Suppose ye. Suppose ye. Shall he be taught worthy. Uh -huh. Who has trodden underfoot the Son of God. And has counted the blood of the covenant where he, he was sanctified as unholy sin. And has done despite unto the spirit of grace any sin you commit as a born again child attracts consequence read further for we know him you know that him. has said that has said what vengeance belongeth unto me vengeance belongeth unto me i will recompense here the lord uh -huh. and again and again the lord shall judge his people who are those his no, people unbeliever mm -mm. unbeliever who are those that we judge his people. Mm -hmm. What is the value of judgment if there is no punishment? Certainty of consequence is there in the Old Testament. The, the day you eat it, you die. Something dies. When you say you, it's a complete description of who you are, your destiny. So something that makes you who you will be, something inside must die. Something must die. A success story must die. Something will, God determine what He came. No sin goes unpunished until you know that the certainty of consequence. You are not safe. Deception just started when you are thinking you can go free over any sin you commit. You have been deceived. That's how they will deceive Adam. God said, you shall surely die. He said, don't worry, you won't surely die. Now, when you are being told by any preacher, now, because we are under grace, it doesn't matter what you do. Just repent and it's over. He deceived you. He said, God will judge his people. So, the fundamental teaching, I want to teach you now about mal marriage. If you violate it, judgment is come. Don't run away. When the judgment is coming, you'll be blaming this, blaming that. <laughs> That's why prayer doesn't change such judgment. That's why many women are having problems. They're moving from prayer fellowship to prayer fellowship. When you don't respect your husband. I'm coming. I'm, let, me, let me settle down. Christianity is a kingdom. Better hear what I said. What did I say? Christianity is a until you see it as a kingdom. That's why when Jesus came, all the parables he preached, he kept on saying, The kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God. Why, why was he using kingdom? Kingdom can be God. He came to bring a kingdom. And every kingdom has rules and regulations. <laughs> What's the first pillar in our matrimonial foundation? 
You don't marry an unbeliever. You don't even befriend an unbeliever. You don't take money from an unbeliever because of a relationship, marriage. Boyfriend, give you money. Say, I'm not going to marry Asha. You just follow me. Mm. Mm, not free lunch. Don't give your daughter to them. Don't allow your son to marry their daughter. If you violate it, wait for judgment. Don't let people deceive you. In the New Testament, again he said it in Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death. What is the meaning of wage? Payment for energy exerted. Payment for labor implemented. So the energy you take do that iniquity. They want to pay you salary. And the salary is punishment. Somebody hear what I'm saying? Number two, pillar. The relationship of the spouses with God must be a strong one. It means you don't marry somebody who is not committed to the Christian principle. You don't marry somebody who is a baby. When babies begin to marry, a man that is not strong in the Lord has not learned the rudiment of Christianity and is marrying and you are joining them. When the man begins to smoke, when the man begins to drink and begin to beat the wife, we settle, 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 settle. It takes maturity to keep a marriage. It takes maturity to survive the storm of matrimony. No, no baby can marry. So for marriage in our kingdom, maturity is needed. Look at this scripture here. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 16. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 16. Woe to them, woe to, to them, thee, O land, to thee, O land, when thy king is a child. When your king is a child, he's talking about those who are in rulership. Now, every married woman is a king per description, a ruler, because you will have children that you will control. You have has help, you will control. So you are a ruler of your home. The husband is a ruler. God say, woe. Upon any marriage that the people, the participants are babies, they are not mature. Whoa, that's the war you are having because you are baby, babies in your character. You are not matured, you entered matrimony as a baby. So, the wahala is what you are experiencing now. Things you can tolerate, you can't tolerate. You don't have long suffering, you don't have patience, you don't have, you don't know how to, no, you don't have what it takes to be a Christian, and you go into marriage. So marriage is for the mature. It's a war upon those who enter leadership as a baby. I pray for anyone who is here, who is already in marriage and your husband is a baby. May God grow him up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not devil, not God. It cost you for allowing a baby to become your head. For allowing a baby to become your head. The husband is the head of the home. And then you allow a baby to become your head. Say, war upon you. Wahala is coming. You are not yet married. I pray may God give you wisdom not to marry a baby as a husband. Amen. Amen. If you are a mother here and a father here, may God give you wisdom not to give your daughter to a, a 
a brother who is not matured. Who is not matured. Because that boy will squeeze your daughter. You will remember me. When you call him, where is the boy? Call your husband for me. He said, my papa, they call you. He said, which papa? I better not say they're busy. Now this boy is not a Christian. He's not much. He doesn't know when you violate a father's instruction. When your father calls you, that refusing to answer is an embarrassment. And God will square you. He said, he that disrespects his father and mother, his life shall be quenched. He doesn't know this. Honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. He doesn't know he's a baby. He doesn't know it. And you go give your daughter to a child. He said, Whoa. You go to investigate the spiritual stability of the person your daughter wants to marry. Because marriage is not a day, it's a journey. A long journey. How many pillars have I explained now? What's the first one? You don't marry an unbeliever. And you don't give your children to unbelievers. What's the second one? Huh? Maturity. Someone say maturity before marriage. Yeah, maturity before marriage. So you want to marry a brother who is not matured? Then he, he, he trick you, trick you. He, he sleep with you, disvaging you. And gave you HIV before marriage. Say, but I don't know. I don't know why he just deceived me. You because he, that guy is a trickster. He is not mature. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't know the consequence of sex before marriage. And you want to marry somebody who does not believe in the biblical terms of no sex before marriage. You, you implicated yourself. What is the second pillar? Maturity before marriage. And every parent must check the maturity. Of the person that want to marry their children. The third pillar in matrimonial foundation. No sex before marriage. Hebrews 13, 4. First Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Hebrews 13 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. And the bed is not defied. But don't woe, defy the bed. Marriage is honorable. Don't sleep before you get married. Any person trying to suggest that is the enemy of your future. Say, a second like sleep with a woman is deceiving you. If you break that foundation, you will suffer it and no prayer will change the consequence because the judgment upon your your decision but woe mongers and adulterers but woe mongers and adulterers God will judge God will judge woe mongers are those who are prostituting sexual war fornicators he said, God will judge. That is why. Go quickly to 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Know ye not, know ye not, that ye are the temple of God, that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defy the temple Anyone of God, anyone that defy the temple of God, him, him, shall God destroy. Destroy. That word destroy is from a Greek word. That means rendered useless. When you commit fornication before marriage, God will render you useless. Take away your power. Frustrate your functionality. Sex before marriage. The consequence, you can avert it by speaking in tongues. The consequence will follow you till you die. If we all keep the fundamentals of the kingdom, we have little prayer to pray. Just be worshipping God because 
we didn't break any foundation. The problem that is harassing the whole church is today. Why? That's why we are not able to win so because we are busy solving problems. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the believer do? Nothing. May you not destroy your foundation. Amen. Of course, you know eternally in Revelation 21, verse 7 to 8, he said, In that place that fornicators will have their part in the lake of fire, which is the second death. That's okay. The third pillar, what is the first pillar? No marriage with unbeliever. The second one, maturity is needed before marriage. The third one, no sex before marriage. The fourth one, no sex outside marriage. No sex outside marriage. Hebrews 13 verse 4. No sex outside marriage. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed on the fire. And the bed on the fire. For warmongers and warmongers and adulterers. adulterers. God will judge. God will judge. Very simple. Open to the book. Beauty Kingdom Foundation. Page 217. I told you already. If I don't see you with the book, this year is foundation we are beauty. We are not preaching any message to make you happy, to excite you. We, are, we preached last year. We preached last week. We are teaching. This is a year of teaching. Because we found that all the preaching, Hallelujah! Jump up and chat! All those raising legs. Like, eh, see, see. Let's settle down. Let's build foundation. So that when I close my eye, I will close the two. Because I know that nothing can push you down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you there? Open to page what? 217. Read on. Op read that place. Page 217. All of us read. Look at it. Look at your book. Read for me from there. In conclusion, in conclusion, God hates extramarital sexual relationships. God hates extramarital sexual relationships. God hates it. Any man sleeping with another person who is not your wife, you are a fool. Go ahead. Whoever violates the sanctity of the marital sexual union, whoever violates the sanctity of matrimonial sexual union, yeah. exposes himself or herself to destruction. To destruction. Join us every Sunday, two powerful services, one church, one pastor, and one God at Believers Ministries Incorporated. Time, 6.15 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. GMT. Believers Ministries Incorporated is located at plot 159 and 161 Upper Wina Road by Kema Road, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. There is an outpouring grace awaiting you. For more information, log on to our website at www.believersministriesincorporated.org or call the number showing on your screen. God bless you as you come.